welcome to the 47th lecture of surface engineering. In the last couple of lectures, we have discussed about uh, physical vapor deposition and a special type of uh, PVD, namely the sputtering. In both the cases, we actually did uh, uh, produce, I mean, the, both the methods are essentially mean for producing thin films, uh, typically few micrometers, at the most maybe few tens of micrometers. Uh, the essential uh, commonality between the, both the techniques was that uh, the composition of the coating or the film that we develop uh, essentially would be the same as that of the target. So, either we uh, vapor, take the material into the vapor state by thermal evaporation, uh, normally this is the basis of all PVD techniques or else we can use uh, uh, certain ions uh, as projectiles to eject uh, atoms, uh, neutral atoms from the target surface and deposit on a colder substrate and that is what we do for sputtering. Now, compared to PVD and uh, sputtering, we are now going to discuss uh, chemical vapor deposition CVD, which essentially um, is about the same technique we are thinking about low uh, thickness deposits, films, uh, typically few tens of micrometers or less than that. Uh, in, in the limit, we can also have, we can create uh, very thin layers, a uh, few tens of nanometers in alternate sequence. But the difference is uh, here, we actually take recourse to some kind of a chemical reaction. So, the film that we deposit actually has a different composition than the precursors and uh, we do not eject, we do not do any thermal ev evaporation, we do bubble gases and we do use uh, heating, both heating of the precursor and as well as heating of the substrate. But most important thing is certain reactions take place in the vapor phase which gets deposited. So, if you look at the overall scheme of the uh, deposition process, uh, so you have a chamber, you have uh, essentially a chamber which is uh, So, this is the chamber that uh, we have and this chamber is an enclosed chamber. We have uh, certain heating devices. So, these are the heating devices here and so we can maintain isothermal temperature over a certain temperature zone. Uh, then we have uh, holders which are essentially stainless steel or some kind of uh, ferrous space uh, retorts. Now, we feed in carrier gas like this. And uh, we actually, when we feed in carrier gas, the carrier gas does not react more, acts more like a, a carrier agency. And then we also send certain precursor gas, which uh, at the reaction chamber, within the reaction cham chamber and the temperature dissociates and deposits onto the surface. Now, after the reaction, we um, uh, produce certain byproducts. In some cases, these byproducts are actually fairly toxic, can be fairly toxic, not always, but whatever it is, these byproduct gases actually come out and they are um, treated in an exhaust chamber uh, by certain reactions. We, uh, For example, in this particular case, when we are using titanium uh, tetrachloride as a precursor gas and we use uh, some other carrier gas, uh, so they mix, uh, for example, hydrogen. So, they mix together and then in the reaction chamber at the temperature, they dissociate. So, uh, hydrogen reacts with uh, TiCl4 and produces hydrochloric acid vapor and that vapor goes into this uh, chamber, scrubber chamber, which is uh, showered with water and then the acid is uh, collected and then uh, taken out or uh, done the requisite treatment before disposal. So, the essential components are the, the furnace, the enclosed chamber, the retort, the, um, the stages on which the samples are mounted. In fact, it can be, uh, uh, it is a batch process and you actually can feed in various sizes, various dimensions of specimens. The uh, deposit composition is fixed, but the substrates can be varied, maybe steel, maybe um, ceramic, maybe uh, certain other non-ferrous metals. This is, so essentially this is a thermochemical process. So, we uh, 
take the uh, uh, advantage of both temperature and uh, chemical reaction and is ideal for uh, manufacturing processes like cutting tools, but is also equally applicable to various semiconductor devices. Uh, one can produce both thicker and thinner coatings and films. What is very important in case of uh, CVD compared to PVD is that the, the, the coating that we develop, the film that we develop actually is fairly adherent. That is because certain chemical reaction takes place and when the deposit or the film um, forms onto the substrate, a uh, certain amount of interdiffusion because of the high temperature takes place and there could be also a thin reaction layer as a result of which the, uh, the weightability is better or the adherence is better than the PVD or sputtering uh, situations where the interface is always very sharp. Now, so we actually intend to produce a non-volatile thin solid film. So the deposit that we, it can be for example, it can be a pure metal, it can be a compound, it can be uh, an alloy, but uh, this uh, film that we develop should be uh, essentially a non-volatile one, so that uh, at the reaction chamber it does not uh, go back into the vapor state again. And this film is produced by the reaction and the reaction through certain ionic species is that we create into the vapor phase. So, reactant gases like we saw in the last example, the titanium tetrachloride, they decompose and liberate certain um, species, atomic species, which react with uh, carrier gases. And uh, what is important is the, uh, the atomic species in neutral state deposit onto the substrate. Now, it can be atomic species, it can be even a compound, it can be a mixture or a composite even, we will we'll learn that in course of the lecture. So, uh, the reaction that happens onto the, uh, on, onto the substrate surface is very important because this reaction makes the coating adherent and also this is where actually, so the substrate actually in this case acts as kind of a catalyst where the actual chemical reaction takes place. So, this is a fairly versatile process because uh, you can produce um, uh, various kinds of coatings or films you can make powders, I mean uh, freestanding powders, fibers, uh, the growth of uh, very large aspect ratio fibers or even uh, self-standing monolithic parts can be produced. So, compositionally uh, apart from uh, elemental coating like uh, carbon, silicon or titanium in some other cases, maybe chromium. Uh, these are possible to be deposited, but also compounds like various carbides, nitrides, borides, oxides, even intermetallic phases like aluminides and silicides and so on. So, this is widely used in semiconductor industry. Uh, I already mentioned the possibilities of making um, tools on metallic or ceramic inserts. Um, we can deposit in the polycrystalline form, in amorphous form as epitaxial layer, for example, epitaxial silicon or silicon dioxide layer on semiconductor wafers, silicon germanium wafers, pure metal like tungsten from say tungsten uh, WO3, one can actually produce uh, a pure tungsten layer onto the surface, silicon nitride, silicon oxynitride, so a complex compound, similarly titanium nitride, TIN and even various high uh, dielectric materials. Uh, so, one can make a conducting coating, an insulating coating, create a dielectric coating uh, and cover the entire surface or certain areas of the surface. One can also produce synthetic diamond to make extra hard layer onto the surface, even diamond like coating or cubic boron nitride or various kinds of other ultra hard coatings on tool inserts or on uh, components which actually are supposed to experience very high um, uh, wear and tear. So, the process uh, basically follows certain steps. Let us say a typical process like this will have uh, initially you have to feed in the uh, precursor gases through force convection. So, this is how the uh, precursor gases come to the reaction chamber. 
then uh, they uh, undergo certain amount of diffusion onto the wafer or the substrate surface and uh, then uh, they get adsorbed. So, this is where the reaction takes place and the, imp the, the desired species actually uh, they get adsorbed onto the surface. Then the surface processes begin which involves uh, decomposition, surface migration and site incorporation. That means, the surfaces are known to have high density of defects, typically point defects like uh, vacancies. So, if you have uh, more uh, density of vacancies uh, you know, free volume onto the surface, then those are the regions where individual atoms can easily come and incorporate. So, if I have for example, uh, certain surface atoms like this and I also have a vacancy. So, an individual atom coming here will find it easier to get incorporated onto the surface. So, that is site incorporation. In fact, we also see site saturation through this process. So, this 3 and 4 occur together and then some desorption takes place which is basically desorption of the byproducts. Like in case of uh, titanium tetrachloride we found that HCl forms and HCl molecules they get desorbed they eject out of the surface and they are transported as byproducts and then these byproducts are taken away uh, uh, through, uh, through the pumping mechanism to a scrubber chamber then we shower we collect the uh, um, poisonous gases or other byproducts and then uh, dispose of through the usual mechanism. So, this is the overall process. So, as you can see this is a batch process. The substrate which in this case is a wafer silicon wafer, but can be any other semiconducting compounds or a metallic uh, component uh, maybe a gear component maybe uh, some parts which actually undergo uh, mechanical uh, forces under uh, experience mechanical forces or relative motion or can be a tool insert and so on. In fact, always uh, remember that the coating that we develop here since it is very thin uh, there are two things very important. One is that the surface uh, topography has to be fairly smooth not rough and number two the adherence uh, with the substrate should be very strong. So, that we do not lose the coating that we develop. And because the composition wise this coating is different than the substrate uh, fairly different then the interface is supposed to be fairly sharp and that can lead to decohesion. So, we need good surface integration. So, the heating is uh, as, as it is a chamber is, it, is a heated chamber even the substrate can also have an auxiliary heating system. Now, so, we are depositing thin films on metallic or non-metallic semiconducting or carbides or various kinds of ceramic uh, substrates even polymeric substrates fairly, uh, fairly flexible and uh, soft substrates also can be given this kind of a CVD coating. So, as we saw that we introduce gases into the chamber that is where the reaction takes place the energy we supply through heat to uh, isothermal temperature condition that we maintain. Uh, we actually can also apply um, high voltage in certain cases uh, where we want certain creation of plasma or some other uh, uh, conditions that we want to create. So, we can use a radio frequency coupled uh, high voltage uh, supply. So, all these are essentially mean for decomposition of the gas that we feed in and it is not just decomposition alone once it decomposes then it reacts either with the carrier gas or with the substrate surface and this reaction produces the thil, uh, thin film that we intend. So, typically the temperature um, can be uh, several hundred degrees I mean easily above 500 degree centigrade and maybe up to about 1000 degree centigrade in special cases maybe even 1000 1200 degree centigrade. So, um, this process is uh, this is where it is different than the PVD. Normally, in case of PVD you would not go anything more than 400 450 degree centigrade uh, that is typically to take the material of high vapor pressure into the vapor state. So, uh, like I was saying that you, you actually can produce a compound layer and you can feed in different kinds of uh, gaseous mixtures like uh, hydrocarbon and hydrogen together or uh, even you can bubble um, titanium tetrachloride and hydrogen together. So, actually um, 
The substrate remains inside the chamber, the temperature and pressure conditions can be varied. What else can be varied and that is what make this uh, whole process very versatile is the gas mixture that you feed in. So, you can actually close the valve and then uh, say for example, uh, you can close any of these valves or control these any of these valves and then uh, uh, actually control the flow rate. Uh, you can even close altogether one particular gas uh, uh, for a particular period of time and hence during that period you produce one film which compositionally would be different than another film when you are feeding in different kind of gases. So, the reactions can be varied and hence the films composition of the films can be changed. Also the pressure plays a very important role. So, pressure wise we actually can have an atmospheric plasma, we can have low pressure um, just a few millibars or we can have uh, plasma and hence we can create a plasma by applying a chemical uh, sorry uh, electrical potential difference and so we can take the help of the plasma to enhance the uh, the growth and the adherence of the CVD film. We can even create a fairly high density plasma where we actually intend to produce uh, not only thicker, but also more uh, complex films. So, all these variations are possible. So, the, the variables wise we certainly are talking about the uh, temperature, the composition, the pressure and of course, the time. So, all these are major important parameters for the CVD process. The, um, in case of plasma enhanced CVD, what we actually uh, need is to use two different uh, uh, electrodes and then create a potential difference electrical discharge uh, for electrical discharge and then you create this plasma. So, there will be a certain amount of dead zone here and these are the substrates on which you want to deposit. So, uh, once you create the plasma, then uh, the deposition is controlled by the thickness of this plasma layer or the so called uh, dead sheath that you have in between. So, uh, you need the substrates to be grounded and you need uh, the, the other electrode actually uh, which uh, will produce the plasma. The, the capacitive coupling is essential is, is the reason why uh, the, the gases inside dissociate into uh, the plasma state and, and, and the chemical reaction that follows actually now can take place at a relatively lower temperature. So, compared to the previous cases where we did not have the presence of plasma, we saw that the CVD is typically held at about 500 degrees centigrade or above. But because of the presence of uh, these uh, plasma, this same reaction can now happen at a much lower temperature compared to the this is the normal CVD temperature range. So, this lower deposition temperature is actually very helpful if you are dealing with sensitive uh, materials like a semiconductor device. So, there will be very little damage thermal damage to the substrate uh, and yet you can deposit the kind of film that you want like a high dielectric or maybe a conducting film whatever you want. So, there are certainly a distinct advantages uh, that we can see in case of plasma enhanced CVD. So, uh, we can restrict the temperature. So, we can conduct the uh, deposition at a lower temperature. We can adopt fairly high deposition rate. Uh, the film quality is uh, known to be better and actually um, uh, more adherent. And overall, uh, the deposit that you form is much better or more conformal to the substrate, meaning dimension wise, if the contour wise, whatever you deposit will exactly mimic. So, if, if you have a flat surface, there is no problem, but if you have a rough surface, then also the deposit that you form will be fairly conformal to the substrate. Actually, the presence of plasma also helps to remove uh, certain um, um, barrier layer if at all it is present in the form of some thin oxide or some other reaction products. But uh, uh, there are certain disadvantages. For example, there is possibility of producing certain byproducts and which may get deposited along with the film. Uh, the plasma uh, produces certain chemical reaction. Uh, you actually would like to uh, deposit only the desired product but there could be certain byproducts 
due to the reaction taking place inside the chamber which may get incorporated maybe some um, uh, complex uh, uh, interstitial compounds or intermittent compounds uh, may get uh, deposited but otherwise uh, kinetically this is much faster process now in low pressure CVD, uh, which is uh, where you actually um, are um, using fairly low pressure, just a few tors compared to atmospheric pressure. So, you have fairly uh, low pressure and because of this low pressure, the uh, generally the, the growth velocity is uh, much higher at high temperature region. Now, typically in case of an atmospheric plasma, this would be the kind of uh, growth rate. So, if you plot plot growth velocity as a function of reciprocal of temperature. So, this is a high temperature region and this is the region where you see that the uh, normal atmospheric uh, uh, CVD would give you a, a velocity profile which will be high, but will not be ex very high, but then it uh, drops as the temperature decreases. In case of uh, low pressure plasma, the, the reactivity is higher, the uh, transport rate is higher as a result, the velocity also will be higher. So, you have a fair amount of higher velocity at high temperature region. Um, so, this region, this uh, provision is important because this is where the reaction is mass transfer controlled. Um, so, we certainly have these advantages, we have faster growth, we have uh, less auto doping meaning um, ejected atoms from the substrate uh, or the chemical reaction getting doped uh, or reaching the vapor phase and getting doped. So, this uh, hazard is less in case of uh, low pressure CVD. Uh, the dilutant gas or the carrier gas requirement is low because already we are doing at very low pressure. So, uh, scattering um, or resistance from within the atmospheric uh, atmosphere within the chamber is less. The gas consumption is relatively low and the byproducts also are low just because the gas pressure is low. So, obviously, the reactant concentration is low. So, um, so overall the velocity will depend upon uh, the velocity will depend upon the uh, various partition coefficient and the uh, um, uh, convection coefficient uh, and convection coefficient in turn is uh, dependent upon the layer thickness and the diffusion uh, coefficient of the gas and diffusion coefficient in turn is dependent upon the pressure that we have in the. So, if you decrease the total pressure, then you increase the diffusion diffusivity, you increase the um, uh, convection coefficient and also the velocity. So, this is how the process uh, when you make it low pressure, then making it low pressure helps in increasing all these major kinetic parameters and as a result of which the growth velocity in general is higher at high temperature region. The on the other hand this process like any other CVD process is a line up side process. The step coverage is uh, low because the velocity uh, or, or the pressure, the, the availability of the diffusant or the reactant is low and there is certain amount of shadowing effect which cannot be avoided. So, for very small features, very uh, sharp features, there will be certain difficulty. Um, in fact, this uh, for when the substrate say for example, this is the, uh, this is the uh, stage on which we have these uh, samples, these are the substrates. And, uh, now, the flux of uh, arrival of the of the de deposits or the molecules or the atoms of the deposit, they will be dependent upon the concentration gradient, what we have in the gaseous phase and at the surface and of course, the uh, uh, coefficient of convection. Now, this uh, actually um, at the surface, uh, the flux that is available uh, in terms of the molecules per unit area per unit time will depend on the partition coefficient. So, what is the level of partitioning happening at the surface? Now, so the overall flux will be uh, when, 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 the, uh, when the situation is controlled uh, very optimally, then the flux actually 
will be equal both in the uh, away from the substrate surface and very close to the surface or onto the surface. Because by then one of the steps which could be due to partition coefficient or the convection or the concentration will actually make this uh, condition uh, valid that the flux will be equal both for uh, uh, away from the um, boundary layer or uh, at the top of the boundary layer or at the surface. So, this is what we want and then finally, um, the profile normally the concentration profile varies like this, the concentration profile of the reactant species which we want to be deposited. So, away from the surface the concentration will be higher, but at the surface the concentration will be lower and this is dictated by this uh, both uh, by the, con the partition coefficient and the coefficient of convection. Um, so, this is how this C g decreases over a distance. Now, um, the, the, uh, the diffusion the epitaxial layer that we form basically the, the thickness of the, of the species the concentration of the species always decreases with distance like uh, this way. So, this is how the, so this is the surface and this is uh, into the depth and this is where the, uh, the diffusion is the maximum active. But then um, uh, and that is why the concentration is the highest, but the concentration decreases and then uh, below a certain level you will reach a saturation. The important point is that this high uh, concentration depth from the surface this region from the surface. So, this is the region which is very important and uh, control of this can be uh, or thickness of this region can be controlled through the um, uh, through, main, through controlling uh, the concentration terms and which in turn will be from the feed rate and of course, the temperature and other uh, parameters. So, this is the example of uh, certain coatings that we can develop. Uh, maybe first you have a PVD coating and then uh, first you can have a CVD coating and then you can have a final PVD coating. So, this is the kind of a composite coating that you can develop, but what is important is that in case of like I was saying in case of a CVD one can actually grade the coating from the depth uh, to the surface or from the surface to the depth the, the comp coating can be graded. And this is entirely dependent upon what kind of gas you feed in, what is their flow rate, concentration and other things. One can actually change alternatively the feed gases and make multi layer coatings and can make layered structures. And uh, these kind of uh, layered structures is very important because if you make a very thick coating of a particular very high modulus uh, material, then there is a possibility of greater chance of possibility of spallation or decohesion because at the interface uh, the mismatch is very large. But if the same uh, coating may be a carbon nitride or uh, a mixed nitride or a silicide, if you do it in alternate thin layers, very thin alternate layers, then the mismatch is actually uh, accommodated nicely and the stress generated at the interfaces is minimized and as a result you actually can make a much more adherent, durable and uh, uh, mechanically stronger coating on top of the substrate. So, what did we discuss so far? We have talked about the, the mechanism, the definition, the mechanism and scope of CVD and we realized that uh, CVD distinguishes itself from other kinds of thin film coating techniques by the fact that we are able to deposit a composition which is different than the precursor gases or the vapor that we feed in. And in fact, this is how it actually differs from almost all other kinds of coatings either from vapor state or liquid state or solid state uh, because the compositional variation is possible here because of the chemical reaction that takes place. So, it is obviously much more versatile than all other vapor based techniques. The process parameters we have discussed are mostly the composition, the flow rate, the temperature, the time. Uh, substrate condition and so on. Um, the, the gas pressure is very important because uh, we saw that in case of low pressure CVD, we actually can increase the kinetics of the process much faster. Uh, 
and also uh, the, uh, the demerits like auto doping and so on can be avoided to a large extent. The adherence in CBD is better because of uh, uh, the possibilities of uh, not only diffusion but even thin chemical reaction layer at the surface which makes it more adherent. There are demerits, one of them is of course the uh, emission of the poisonous gases as byproducts which need to be handled carefully. Also the entire chamber has to be hermetically sealed during the processing because you are dealing with uh, reactive gases like hydrogen or certain um, hydrocarbons or even um, uh, uh, halide containing gases and so on. So leakage must be prevented at, by all means. And so we actually also have to worry not only about the chamber but also the, also the pumping devices that we use either to feed in or to uh, extract. All kinds of cutting tool inserts, uh, semiconductor devices, uh, uh, ceramic components, uh, all moving parts which require a very thin, hard, high elastic modulus uh, substrates are ideal for such uh, composite, uh, ideal for such coatings by chemical vapor deposition. Thank you very much.